Winston Edmondson here with Studio B. I'm at IBM Edge 2013, and I've got Richard Swain, a storage specialist with IBM, who's going to fill us in on some of the trends in storage. Richard, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. So what are you seeing? What are you hearing in the world of storage? What, uh, where are things going? Well, I think one of the main things that we're seeing in storage today is, is definitely flash technology and how it's taking um, a lot of the older technologies, you know, spinning, tape, whatever it is, and m condensing it down to a smaller footprint, allowing customers you know, to be able to, to condense racks down into a one new to you space. Um, I think that's a very disruptive technology, and it's, it's a enabling people to um, not only condense, but also save money on administration costs and other things. Have the advances been so prominent that there are no more naysayers? I mean, is it kind of the de facto, or is it? Are there still some folks that are trying to hold off? Well, the cool thing about um, IBM is that we have you know the full portfolio. So some you know some technology may not you know be on flash. So you know you need to have something that can you know put the very things that need to be on flash on flash, and then move things around like our easy tier application. So you know instead of having a person figuring out oh this needs to be on flash, you know you can actually use a robot you know, basically to that doesn't sleep, you know, it doesn't need to be fed, um, and he can figure out, okay, well, this data is not hot anymore. Let's move it down to, you know, like our two, three terabyte drives. So when we have customers that are almost doing cartwheels, they're so happy about being able to reduce uh, overhead because they don't need necessarily the the staff, they, they've got systems from IBM that are doing a lot of the thinking and, and processing for, is that what they're talking about? Well, I think it's 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 a freeing people up again to, you know, do their jobs. You know, instead of having to worry about, oh, well, I've got, you know, someone calling me, you know, constantly saying, you know, my, my database is not performing. You know, they're out there actually looking at new technology and figuring out, you know, how do, how do you take your company to the next level? So customers that are considering this and they, they see the benefits, Obviously, they're not going to be able to just transform everything overnight. Kind of walk me through what a uh, you know what it might look like to make a transformation, uh, maybe a gradual transformation over to some of these new technology? I think the, the biggest thing that um, a lot of custom, customers are doing now is virtualization. So, you know, getting that virtual, lay, virtualization layer in there so that they can move these technologies in non-disruptively, that's a big thing for customers. So that as technology changes, you know, we're, we're always changing something new. You know, the next next year it's going to be something else, right? So you've got to have something at a, at a beachhead there to allow these technologies to come in and go as needed. Tell me about uh, preparing for the future, because you've got some, some organizations that are willing to make the investment to get where they need to be right now, kind of, uh, you know, the latest and greatest they're willing to adopt, but they want to hedge their bets and they, they don't want that investment to, you know, be a waste and, and then tomorrow or, or, you know, a year from now they have to make another change. What are things that are being done to, to help maybe for the next 10 years, kind of hedge their bets and, and, and prepare them for what needs to be done later. I think one of the unique values at IBM is we offer um, infrastructure studies for people. We come in with our, with our team that is basically um, isolated from sales, isolated from products, and they actually look at what a customer has. And they, they try to help them build a plan for the next, not two years, but you know, five, 10 years, and figuring out, okay, you know, here is a plan to move you forward into that. Um, and it's not based on technology. It's not based on a product. It's it's based on business processes, and it's solving that business process. Let's talk to some of the folks that are familiar. They're, they're hearing some of the rumblings about Flash, but maybe they, from what they hear, it sounds like more of a trend. And if they want to be trendy, yeah, they can adopt it. Let's talk about some some hardcore. I mean, some actual benefits. Any case studies that you can you can talk about that can really demonstrate how moving towards Flash will will make a a clear benefit? I think one of the clear benefits is in the database world. So one of the things that Flash allows um, uh, databases is to give a response back a lot quicker. And being able to respond quickly to a database means that you have fewer cycles on a system. So you know, a fl you think of Flash as being storage, but in reality, it's a it's a server play. So we, we talk to our server people about, you know, look, you may have a, a system that's overloaded now. And you know, putting Flash in, you can get these responses responses back, so you don't have to burn so many CPU cycles. So it's, it's, it's really unique that we're, we're talking to more server and database people about Flash than storage people. Is this what is enabling some of the uh, close to real-time big data uh, analysis where you're able to really crunch and, and get access to meaningful information and then use it quickly. Is, is Flash what's kind of enabling some of these, these huge... Uh... Most definitely. So Flash in, in big data is very important. Be, 
getting that data and, and crunching it down, like you said, in a very quick time, and then executing it off in something else. So, you know, as, as your streams are coming in, you know, you're, you're, you're crunching it down, and then as the data becomes less important, um, you know, it might be a day or two, you move it off to, you know, two terabyte, three terabyte, even off to the cloud if you'd like. So, you know, that, that, flash, that flash layer is very important in big data to, to get those responses back. Now, I know that you, you always have your finger on the pulse of, uh, of storage. You know what's happening, uh, you know, before a lot of these folks know it. You can, I mean, you just, it's almost like you're a psychic. You can predict these things. So for the folks that want to kind of uh, follow along with you, are you tweeting? Are you, how can people follow and kind of take advantage of your knowledge? Great. So I, I do have a, a Twitter account and also write a um, blog for IBM called The Storage Tank. You can find me at uh, The Storage Tank. Just Google anything. Also, um, I write a, uh, a Unstructured Data or, or uh, NAS uh, website for IBM as well. Perfect. Winston Edmondson with Richard Swain, Studio B, checking out.